don't think we would have done another record if we hadn't come up with the idea. Cause we'd done it three times and it was just, we knew what was going to happen because we'd done it three times. And you do the same things and you sit in the studio and some photographer comes in from some magazine and takes a picture of you sitting at the desk talking about songs you haven't written yet. And it's just pointless. So we wanted to just miss all that out and just bring out a record and do it a different way. And uh, we were dead excited because it was uh, different and loads of fun. It's quite a brave move, I think, from us. I don't think people were expecting Kaiser Chiefs to do anything like this. So, you know, we've kind of tried to save the music industry. Well, we have, because it is dying. We all know it's dying. So we tried to do something different. Yeah, and record, um, record companies seem to want to tackle the problem of uh, people illegally downloading music by trying to make music as cheap as possible, but it's just not going to work. It's not a magic price where it'll get to and people go, oh, I'll buy it now, it's 40p. Mm. So you've got to do something different. And, uh, you know, we're not saying we, we haven't done anything to say, we just, at least we're trying and not sitting on our ass and moaning about it. Hey, I was in London mm. and uh, the morning after we got, we flew back from Australia and I was really jet lagged. I stayed up all night watching it, rolling news. And it was, uh, it was pretty shocking stuff to mm. come home to. So the next day, nothing to do, I had a day off. So me and Simon went and uh, had a look around. Carrying brooms. Helped out clean up. No one touched his Rolls Royce though. So nah, no, yeah, the roller's safe. It's funny, we, I mean, if you actually listen to the lyrics of our song and, and give him a fucking chance, <laughs> then we, we did fucking predict this. We've been singing about culture and the state of the city centres and the state of society for five years. So, yeah. yeah I was listening, I was reading an article by a, mole, uh, a moaning old rock star. I won't tell you. Me? No, on you. Right. Not that old. It's, this guy's at least twice as old as he. Right, okay. And he was moaning on about bands nowadays don't write songs about like culture and stuff. And I was just thinking, what are you listening to? We haven't played in Leeds for a long long time. The last gig we did before we went and made, made this new record was in Leeds at the Leeds Festival. So it's going to be good. Doing two nights at Kirk's the Abbey, which is weird. Not in a tent? No, outside. Outside September. in a tent. 10,000 each night or something? Yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, they don't let's play places that aren't ruins already anymore because we'll blow the bloody roof off. Got a very big UK tour coming up. Yeah. Lots of theatres. It's going to be good again. Yeah, we, the... we were bored of playing those big arenas. <laughs> oh, God, and all that money. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just rolling in. Oh, so right. we thought we'd play some little venues. Yeah. yeah so much you can't count it. You can't fit it in your wallet. Yeah, so we, we thought we'd play some little places because that's what we can fill. <laughs> I tell you what, there was a real, there was a real uh, trend for loads of bands playing arenas at the end of the, two, the, the 2000s. And it got to a point where you'd be doing this tour and like there'd be Pete Doherty one night in an arena. It was just getting boring, I think. Yeah, Not yeah. Pete Doherty, I like that, but you know, like, it's just, who wants to go to an arena where you stand around eating hot dogs? Yeah. Well, I do, because I get loads of money. You know? <laughs> yeah, but, we're doing it, so it's a very extensive tour, which is great. It's like, um, like one of the old enemy tours, you know, we when we played that it's like, you know, ten dates, fourteen dates, proper big tour of the UK. So I love to it. Tour. It's great. Great. Yeah.